Almighty God says, For several thousand years, man has longed to be able to witness the arrival of the Savior. Man has longed to behold Jesus the Savior on a white cloud as he descends in person among those who have pined and yearned for him for thousands of years. Man has longed for the Savior to return and be reunited with the people. That is, for Jesus the Savior to come back to the people from whom he has been apart for thousands of years. Since Jesus departed, the disciples who followed him and all of the saints who were saved thanks to his name have been desperately pining for him and awaiting him. All those who were saved by the grace of Jesus Christ during the Age of Grace have been longing for that joyful day during the last days when Jesus the Savior arrives on a white cloud and appears among man. Of course, this is also the collective wish of all those who accept the name of Jesus the Savior today. Throughout the universe, all those who know the salvation of Jesus the Savior have been desperately yearning for the sudden arrival of Jesus Christ to fulfill the words of Jesus when on earth. I shall arrive just as I departed. <sighs> Almighty God's words have struck a chord in the bottom of my heart. All these years of believing in the Lord, I have always longed for his arrival this way. Man believes that following the crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus went back to heaven upon a white cloud and took his place at the Most High's right hand. Similarly, man conceives that Jesus shall descend again upon a white cloud. This cloud refers to the cloud that Jesus rode upon when he returned to heaven. Among those who have desperately yearned for him for thousands of years, and that he shall bear the image and clothes of the Jews. After appearing to man, he shall bestow food upon them, and cause living water to gush forth for them, and shall live among man, full of grace and love, living and real, and so on. Yet Jesus the Savior did not do this. He did the opposite of what man conceived. He did not arrive among those who had yearned for his return and did not appear to all men while riding upon the white cloud. He has already arrived, but man does not know him and remains ignorant of his arrival. Man is only aimlessly awaiting him. Almighty God's words have revealed how I yearn for the Lord's arrival. His words are indeed the truth. They are expressions of the Holy Spirit. Could Almighty God really be the Lord Jesus returned? be true. If the Lord really had returned, he should have done so with great glory while descending upon a cloud. Moreover, heaven and earth would have quaked and the sun and moon would have stopped shining. So far, these sights have not happened. So how can they say that the Lord has already returned? Just what exactly is this all about?
That's fine. Put the pole in. Brother Xiao. Yeah? The question you pose is something that has confused everyone in the religious world. I used to think this way, too. Later, someone bore testimony to Almighty God's work of the last days for me. And only then did I discover that by waiting to welcome the Lord's return, we have all made the same mistake. Oh, what mistake? We are only waiting for the Lord's return based on the prophecies of his descent upon a cloud. But we have overlooked other prophecies about the Lord's return. This is a grave mistake. Many parts of the Bible contain prophecies about the Lord's return. You're probably aware of them, right? For example, the Lord's prophecies, Behold, I come as a thief. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. There is also Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, and will sup with him, and he with me. Right, in chapter 17 of Luke. For as the lightning that lightens out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. These prophecies mention the Lord's returning as a thief, the coming of the Son of Man, and they mention that he speaks to people while knocking at the door and so on. Doesn't this show that when it comes to the Lord's return, besides his public descent upon a cloud, he also will descend in secret ways? A secret descent? Yes. If we believe the Lord will only come by descending upon a cloud, then how could the prophecies of him coming in secret be fulfilled? Think about it. When the Lord descends on a cloud, there will be a number of great portents. The sun and moon will no longer shine, the stars will fall from the sky, and heaven and earth will shake. That will certainly be an earth-shaking scene, and everyone will definitely see it and know about it. Then how will the prophecies be fulfilled? The Lord will come as a thief, and that he will knock on the door. When the Lord descends on a cloud, Everyone will see it. Will anyone need to testify the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him? The Lord also said, but first he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. How will that prophecy be fulfilled? Besides, there are many more prophecies in the Hey, you! Get over there! Hey, pick up that pole. Faster! Hurry up! There are also multiple prophecies in the Bible that when the Lord returns in the last days, he will complete some work. For example, the work of judgment will start with the house of God. He'll open the scroll, break its seven seals. And there's also the harvesting and the winnowing, separating people according to their kind, sheep and goats, the wheat and the tares, the good and evil servants. If the Lord comes in great glory, descending on a white cloud, and everyone sees it, that would be the spiritual body of the Lord Jesus resurrected, appearing to mankind. So wouldn't everyone fall to the ground and obey and follow him? Who would resist him? That way, how would the sheep and the goats and the good servants and the evil servants be differentiated? How would the work of harvesting and winnowing be done? I'd never thought about any of that. Yeah. There are many prophecies in the Bible about the Lord's return in the last days. If we cast aside the other prophecies, but just delimit the way the Lord will return based on one or two parts of the Bible, as him descending on a white cloud, isn't that a little arbitrary? That way, we'd miss the chance to welcome his return and be rejected by him. Hey, you! Hey, you! Carry this wood there! Hurry it up!
Brother Zhao's fellowship today was really full of light. It seems that I've been seeing the Lord's return too simply. There are so many prophecies about His return in the Bible, but I had never really pondered over them. I had just delimited how He would return. <sighs> it's my fault for not seeking the truth in the Lord's words. I just blindly listened to the pastors and elders and held on to the prophecies of the Lord descending on a cloud. I'm such a fool. Okay. Go ahead. Go on. I used to be just like you. I define the Lord's return as Him descending on a cloud. The light I share in fellowship is what I've understood since accepting Almighty God's work in the last days. The Bible prophesied that the Lord would come as a thief, and and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. The appearance and work of Almighty God have fulfilled these prophecies. From the outside, he looks just like a regular person. He speaks from within normal humanity. Who could imagine that he is the appearance and the work of the Lord? Yeah, who would have thought of it? This does fulfill the prophecy of the Lord's return as a thief. Thank the Lord. If, therefore, you shall not watch, I will come on you as a thief. This prophecy refers to Almighty God's appearance and work suddenly spreading to every sect and denomination just like a thief. No one could have realized it. His preachers bear witness to his words, to all those who seek God's appearance, and they fellowship on Almighty God's words. This is the Lord knocking at the door. Thanks be to the Lord. So that's what it really is. Yeah. Since Almighty God's appearance and work, he has been subjected to the brutal hunts and persecution of the CCP. And he has suffered the mad resistance, condemnation, and rejection of the religious world. There have been many evil spirits and demons who have openly attacked, condemned, and blasphemed Almighty God online. This fulfills the Lord's prophecy. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. If the Lord had descended publicly on a cloud that people imagined, then the tares, the goats, the evil servants, and the Antichrist would definitely fall down and worship to accept Almighty God. How would they be exposed then? The CCP demons and all the unbelievers would also accept Almighty God. Wouldn't that just be utter chaos in the world? How would God's work in the last days be carried out? So only if God is incarnated as the Son of Man to appear and work can these prophecies spoken by the Lord Jesus, including those of the Lord's work after His return in the last days, be fulfilled, be completed. Right. Thanks be to the Lord. The Lord's prophecies of coming in secret has already been fulfilled. I didn't know that. I've still been waiting for the Lord to descend on a cloud and rapture me into the kingdom in my dreams. I didn't know that I had been abandoned by the Lord. I'm such an idiot. Apparently, before the prophecies are fulfilled, explanations are useless. No one understands the prophecies. Yes. Without accepting the work of Almighty God in the last days, we wouldn't understand. Without accepting the work of Almighty God in the last days, we wouldn't understand these prophecies. Almighty God has come 
and expressed all the truths to purify and save mankind, doing the work of judgment in the last days. His sheep listened to his voice, and wise virgins from every denomination hear the words Almighty God has expressed and know them as truth, as God's voice, and they've turned to Almighty God. This is the rapture. These people have been raptured up to God's throne and are judged before Christ's judgment seat. They are first to be purified, made into overcomers by God, and become the first fruits. This fulfills the prophecy from Revelation. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits to, to God, God and to the, the Lamb. Lamb. And, in, and their in their mouth, mouth was, found was found no guile, no guile for they, are for they were without fault before, before the throne, throne of God. God. Amen. After God descends in secret and makes this group of overcomers, his great work will be complete. After that, he will descend on a cloud and appear to all nations and peoples. That is when the great events of the Lord's return that you talk about will occur. And that will fulfill the prophecy in Revelation 1-7. Behold, Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Amen. This will be the scene of the Lord openly descending on a cloud, and all eyes will see him. Even some of those who resisted and condemned Almighty God will be able to see him descending on a cloud, which is why all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Right. Can't you see that God does things in stages with a plan? Yes. The prophecies of the Lord's return have basically all been fulfilled now. The only one left is the prophecies that he will openly descend on a cloud after the disaster. Now you understand, right? Thanks be to the Lord, I understand. Thanks be to the Lord. Uh, if it weren't for God's guidance. Almighty God says, Many people may not care what I say, but I still want to tell every so-called saint who follows Jesus. That when you see Jesus descend from the heaven upon a white cloud with your own eyes, this will be the public appearance of the Son of Righteousness. Perhaps that will be a time of great excitement for you. Yet you should know that the time when you witness Jesus descend from the heaven is also the time when you go down to hell to be punished. It will herald the end of God's management plan and be when God rewards the good and punishes the wicked. For the judgment of God will have ended before man sees signs, when there is only the expression of truth. Those who accept the truth and do not seek signs, and thus have been purified, shall have returned before the throne of God and entered the Creator's embrace. Only those who persist in the belief that the Jesus who does not ride upon a white cloud is a false Christ shall be subjected to everlasting punishment. For they only believe in the Jesus who exhibits signs, but do not acknowledge the Jesus who proclaims severe judgment and releases the true way of life. And so it can only be that Jesus deals with them when he openly returns upon a white cloud. They are too stubborn, too confident in themselves, too arrogant. How could such degenerates be rewarded by Jesus? 
The return of Jesus is a great salvation for those who are capable of accepting the truth. But for those who are unable to accept the truth, it is a sign of condemnation. You should choose your own path and should not blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and reject the truth. You should not be an ignorant and arrogant person, but someone who obeys the guidance of the Holy Spirit and longs for and seeks the truth. Only in this way will you benefit. All these years of believing in the Lord, I've always followed the trends of the religious world. I lived within my own notions and imagination, waiting for the Lord to descend on a cloud and rapture me into the kingdom. I never imagined that the Lord had already returned in the flesh and expressed truths, doing the work of judgment in the last days. I never sought or examined this, so I ended up hoping for his return, but actually denying the Lord, rejecting him. I'm really blind, and I do not know God. If not for the Lord's mercy and his wondrous arrangements that have allowed me to hear his voice, I would have missed this chance of the Lord's coming to rapture me up. I truly thank God.